of artists and creators. And so the difference here, what we're going to be talking about today um, is we're all getting pretty comfortable with using Zoom to talk to each other and to get on Zoom, but we're just going to be talking today about how to use it to create and how to deliver your content to people in various ways. So it's just a little bit of a different set of tools and it's not really super, super challenging, but it's just enough of a, it's enough of a hurdle to stop some people because they just don't know what they need or what they need to know. The short answer is by the end of this, I think this is probably going to be maybe an hour, hour and a half, even with questions, you'll, you should know everything you need to get started. And if you don't, then we'll figure it out as we have already been discovering that we're just learning as we're going along. So this awesome little class, which I hope it's going to be awesome. This is brought to you by Confab, which is why it has been, um, uh, free to join because Confab has, is sponsoring it and Confab is brought to you by Gallery One. Most of you know that, but who knows who's going to watch it, who doesn't know that? So I would just want to thank the Confab uh, team and Gallery One for bringing this to us. And a little hello for, for those who have not met me. And even if you have, I am, my name is Robin Mayberry and I am a resident artist at Gallery One, which I have one of those totally sweet studios upstairs, and I'm really, really happy about that. Um, where my Zoom expertise in particular comes in, such as it is, is that I, for about a year now, I've been leading a regular online class using the, using the Zoom format and the things that I'm gonna show you, and it's really cool. And I was, I'm gonna speak, everything I share here is gonna be from experience. And my experience with Zoom was that I was really afraid. I kept thinking, oh man, this would be cool if I could just you know, open it up to people in different areas and different time zones and have it be recorded and all those nice things that we're gonna talk about, but I did not know how to do it. And my bottleneck was that I couldn't figure out how to manage the cameras. So that is one of the things that I'm going to show you. Um, actually, we're going to talk about it. I'm not going to show you, but we'll talk about it anyway. It's simple is what you need to know. But I've been doing these online art journal classes for about a year now, and I'll tell you what's awesome about it. I've got people that come regularly from around the state, from the East Coast, the different time zones. There's people that are part of it, but they can't go at a certain time, so they get the recording, and then they still do like the project, and they share the project. We have a Facebook page so that they can share, but the Zoom part is the part how I really can deliver this content. It's two things. I can just work with people that aren't actually in the Ellensburg area or that don't have, you know, one o'clock on a Sunday free. And also that then we have it archived so people can go back and do it. And, and they do, like I just had a request just the other day, like, oh, can you pull up that one from like four months ago and do it again? And we have it recorded. So it's, really quite nice it's an it's a game changer for delivering your content so that's why we're going to talk about this today i think i probably got ahead of myself a little bit yeah we're going to talk about what this platform can do for you which i already answered a little and what you need to know as far as like what buttons to push and what you need as far as equipment and it's all fairly manageable it really is so this is why i'm for Zoom, and I'm really grateful. And I'm not surprised that it rapidly became the thing that everybody's doing, because it's a strong platform. It's really stable. It's got a little bit of a learning curve, but once you know how to use it, it's actually set up in a way that makes sense. And it's really like, you can find the same things over and over again, unlike some other software platforms where they're constantly moving buttons around and stuff. Oh, that's just makes me crazy. Zoom does not do that. Um, but I did put right here with my little cursor, this is one of these things, there may be perfectly awesome other video delivery conference recording systems out there, and there are, because I've used a bunch of them, but Zoom is the one that everybody's using. So for you, that's we're gonna use it because everyone's using it. I mean, it's just like, people are on Facebook because everyone's Facebook, and like we were saying last night, people Google because everybody Googles. And so Zoom has become one of those things, like, enough people have gone through the learning curve now and know how to use it that it's just like this is the this is the one that i recommend just getting comfortable with so this is three of the ways that i can see that it would be really useful as an artist or any kind of content creator to embrace this um, software system the first thing is is that it's essentially a video phone so if like so for example i'm going to say to sam who has all your work at home and 
and you know you might want to connect with a patron you can go on a zoom you can use it on your mobile phone or whatever carry your laptop around but you could go around and show a patron hey here's this piece or what do you think about this piece or if we hang this in the wall how would that look with your sofa you can do that with this video format whereas on a phone or email god help us you know people lose interest you know you know how it is so by being able to engage visually we're visual artists so this is a really good thing to be comfortable with um the second thing is the community creating piece which we saw last night with artist night in which was a blast and i had already myself done one um uh, i had done a, a meeting right beforehand and i was like oh man you know I'm, I'm tired of sitting here staring at the computer but then it was so much fun i mean it was really just fun to see everybody and we just had a conversation or just kind of hanging out and you know just visiting it was like a party it was really really cool and again it's once you've got the handle on it it's, it's just easy and especially right now boy we really need it but our focus today is really the offering the online workshops and experiences so you know, if if you even if you've never instructed before if you're an artist or a creator of any kind this is a great way to deliver hey i know how to do this thing and i can show you how to do this thing or you can or like we were just talking about the person who shows their earrings on facebook this is a great way to do it because you can always hit record too and just share on social media like hey guys hey look at i made this earring and i made this painting and i made this ceramic thing da, da, da. probably didn't make all those things but um you can share your products but you can also this is the thing that i like to do is you can share your expertise so you can create little mini classes without having to like there's a lot of online classes out there that are professionally video shot and all this stuff like that and that's cool and that's a whole other thing but you don't have to jump all those hoops you could just start right here so um before i go any further because i am from new england as i had mentioned last night and i tend to talk really fast and get especially when i'm a little bit nervous which i am because i've never really shared this before um so does anybody have any questions before we charge ahead i'm going to just open up the floor and if so oh we're going to get a little ahead of it. but if you do um we, sarah can unmute you if you raise your hand you can press alt the alt or option key plus y so alt y or option y so if you have any questions at any point you can raise your hand and then sarah um can either answer you on the chat chat function or she can catch my attention that seems like yeah or they can just send the chat message or um because something for us to learn robin when you are um sharing your screen i can't see everyone at once so oh. if people can also unmute themselves so but we'll, we'll manage it so but thank you yeah yeah absolutely see we're learning we're learning as we go um yeah absolutely there's only a small group of of polite people here so if you've got a question just jump in so unmute and say hey i got a question because that will work too so i'm gonna go into just the uh what do we have like six odd things that are very helpful to know so you can deliver content through zoom so i like to start with a, qu a really basic question whether or not to buy the pro package um last i looked the pro package did go up a little bit i think it's about two dollars a month now and i think you can still pay monthly i don't know if you have to buy it all for, uh, annually or not the big difference of whether you spend that money or not is whether or not you expect to be delivering content that you're not going to want to be interrupted in 40 minutes so if all you're doing like let's say you just want to use it for studio visits to show patrons your work or whatever or you just want to use it to connect with people you can get bumped out the free version you can do everything we're doing well most of the things we're doing here no problem um but at 40 minutes you'll get kicked out and you have to log back in but if you want to start delivering classes or content like this that's Un, you know it's unprofessional like oh guys gotta go because i only have the free version oh everybody log back in in 40 minutes you know you know obviously you don't want that so if you think you're going to be making money with it in my opinion everything i'm going to suggest here there's a little bit of an investment but it's an investment because this is going to open up opportunities for you to be able to share your work and your knowledge so i go pro because i'm going over 40 minutes also the one gig 
gigabyte of cloud recording space. I have my personal computer just does not have very, it doesn't have enough memory. I have like two songs on it and it's whatever. So, and I have a whole lot of software on it and stuff like that. So I like to store it in the cloud. So for me, that is a benefit. If you have a, a computer system where you can, you just have a ton of memory, that may not matter to you. But if you don't, that additional cloud storage space that comes with your pro account. Then there's also all these other things that are just frankly, you know, th there's lots of add ons that I haven't found to be, um, they seem to be more suited to people in a business environment where they're like collaborative meetings and stuff like that. But as far as just delivering workshops, that's the big difference for pro. More time without getting cut off and you'll be able to uh, end uh, cloud storage. So I wanted to walk you through the process. So I'm going to exit out of here and you're going to see my face and I want to walk you through the process of getting a meeting started. So has um, Sarah, you'll have, I'm sorry, because you're going to have to report back to me. Wait a minute. Maybe if I go to grid view. Okay. Yeah, I can see you guys. Um, has anybody not set up a meeting. I don't, I'm not going to go through this if you guys already know how to do this. Is there anyone on the call who has not set up a meeting? Okay, boom. All right. So worth it, worth our time. So you, um, is there anybody who does not yet have a Zoom account, even a free one? Okay. So getting, I really recommend just starting with a free account um, if you're interested and then you can see because it's free and it's pretty, you know, they just want your name and, and a, a, like a, username and that sort of thing like that's very easy to, to sign up for so i'm going to just move my square here so i'm going to zoom.us and then you go to my account and i'm going to just be um non uh private here for a moment so um i'm going to so i've logged into my account when you log into your account you see your you should have your little face here and you'll add that if you haven't created a meeting or a, an account before you just click on meetings and you schedule a new meeting. So again, I'm just going into my account and on the sidebar is, you know, you can just look through it. It's pretty straightforward meetings and you schedule a meeting. So from here, you can call, you can make a meeting and you can say, awesome Zoom meeting. And the description, you know, if you've got a bunch of awesome Zoom meetings, that might be helpful. You set your date and time, you set your duration, I forget how long you can go. Yeah, I think you can go up to eight hours for a meeting. Um, again, I have pro. And you set your time zone, that's important. Um, but one thing I wanna show you for sure, we all, they just changed this. All meetings now require a meeting password. You can un, or it default, I'm sorry, defaults to requiring a password. You can uncheck it, but they're going to, they're automatically, sending you there unless you're like no i don't need a password but otherwise it's going to create one for you the other this gets a little um you want your your host video to be on usually unless you just want to do an audio only call um the i like to use either telephone or computer audio because people can dial in by plain old regular telephone to a zoom meeting it's a little clunky but they can most people use their computer audio, but every now and then someone will want, it's just, it's more accessibility. So I leave that available to people. And then on the meeting options, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. I do not like people to let me join before I get there. I always leave that unchecked. Um, I have learned that the hard way. <laughs> Again, lessons learned the hard way. Um, if I'm running a minute late and I kind of get on and, uh, and there's already people standing there, <laughs> It's virtually, it's kind of hairy. So I like to make sure I'm there before they can be there. And so even just today, I was feeling a little restless. So I was trying to, I'm not the host of this. So I kept trying to join <laughs> and I couldn't. And that's good. That's good for the host. You want that. And it just says waiting for host. It doesn't say go away forever. It just says waiting for host. It's very polite. I also like to mute participants upon entry because just reality is people are fooling around with their camera or the dog still barking. So as they're coming in, they're quiet. Um, you know, it's just like in an office, you know, you shut the door. And um, so I just like to keep that checked up. Uh, oh, here's another thing they just changed. Enable waiting room. 
that I do, I hate the waiting room because it can accidentally send people into this purgatory where they can never see your thing. So, and that has happened to me where people are like, I'm still waiting in the waiting room. So uncheck, they just made it. So that's automatically checked. And I hate that. So I uncheck that. Um, this authenticated users is that's again, that's like more of a business thing. People are, you know, worried about privacy or whatever they're talking about changing the world or whatever they're doing. Um, and this recorded record the meeting automatically. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but I do not check that. Um, I make myself a note. I will show you. It says record. Every time I'm doing an online thing, I have a little paper backup because we all know technology. And I say record because I have forgotten to record. <laughs> but if you record the re meeting automatically, as soon as you log on, it's recording and you'll end up with like 10 minutes of blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and then you have to clean up your video and, you know, so just make yourself a note and hit record. So I'm not going to save this, but before I, I click out, does anyone have any questions that come to mind? As you see, I'm just working my way through the check marks. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. So I'm going to just cancel and get out of there. And I will come back over to my presentation. Come here. Uh-oh. Hold on, you. Oh my goodness, I think it's gonna be. Robin, I have a question oh. while you're looking on that. Jan was asking that um, when she scheduled meetings, it's always been on the app rather than on the website. And just wondering if there's been a difference or a preference. I answered her, but I read her question wrong. But um, have you done one or the other? I feel like every time I log into Zoom, it's kind of doing both and I can't really keep up. There's the app, there's the website. <laughs> what there are and that's yeah and actually thank you yes i decided for the purposes of clarity to really focus on going through the desktop there are minor differences most of this stuff you can do on the phone but i think for when you're doing the content create when you're running the meeting rather than just attending the meeting that if you have a, a desktop or laptop that that the web portal is a lot easier it has it's easier to deal with than the app. So I will go on a Zoom call on my phone, but if I'm conducting it, I really prefer to do it on my laptop. Um, but it can be done on the phone. It's just, it's one of those things where if you're gonna do all this stuff on the phone, um, I'm not really particularly addressing that. Just poke around. I mean, the thing about Zoom is you can't break it. It's one of these, like just click all the buttons and find your, find your way through. Um, so the short answer is I prefer to use my laptop, but you can do this on the phone. Um, and some people would prefer to use the phone. I get that. I'm kind of like, I realize I'm edging into this older generation. <laughs> like my daughter does everything on her phone. She writes papers on her phone. You know, she does everything on her phone and I'm sure she could be completely functional via her phone, but I'm just coming at it through the desktop. They're similar. Um, okay. So let's talk a little, any other questions before I move forward? Look at you guys. You're such good students. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about recording. Do, do, do. Uh oh, no, we're not. Yes, we are. Okay, so we talked a little bit about. Hold on, I'm going to move my little self here. Okay, I was all taking up all the screen. Okay, um, we talked about whether you would want to check that recording automatically box. So if you think there's an, a chance that you're not gonna be able to hit the record button or you're a, just have a problem cleaning up your video, you can hit that. I just choose to make sure that I hit the record button when I start. Um, the, and we talked to, Robin. But these are just questions. Yes? I think Jan had a question. Sorry to interrupt. Yes? Uh, before you get too far, on the scheduling the meeting, um, I've had a, your time scheduling recurring meetings um does yours how does yours work for recurring meetings it's so that little drop box or the you know in the meetings say again are you doing it on the phone or on, no, uh, it's on the computer but i use the the program on the computer so i called it call it an app on the computer so it opens not the website but it opens the program oh see you're being fancy but, so, yeah, so, so what i showed you is the web portal 
and I actually feel very fancy saying this because I just had to figure out what the web portal was and what the desktop client was. I think you're using the desktop client and that's more advanced. Go to the web portal, go to Zoom for Dummies. <laughs> so, so, and the, uh, well, the only way I know how to answer this question is if you go to zoom.us, log into your account, go to my meetings, schedule a meeting, and work your way through those checkboxes, one of those checkboxes says recurring meeting. And if you click that, you get a recurring meeting. It only puts you like eight meetings out, I think. So you're not recurring until the end of time. That's the way that I know how to do it. Okay. Does that help? Okay. I haven't been yeah. on the website at all. So I'll, I'll and I've that. discovered that like there's different features in the different ways that you approach Zoom. So um, it, uh, yeah, some I think some things are just better approached through different doors. So if recurring meetings is sticky to zoom.us and go through there. Any other questions before we talk? Okay, L I love questions because they're fun. Okay, so this recording, hold on, I'm gonna make myself small again. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Okay, here we go. The one thing I want to talk about here, should you store locally or in the cloud? We talked about a little bit that just depends on your, the storage capacity you have available, whether it's on your phone or your laptop or what have you. Um, if you've got a ton of storage and that's just a personal choice. Um, I just choose to store in the cloud because I don't have that much storage. Um, the consent piece, that just came to my attention while I was kind of putting this stuff together. It's to me, everything I've ever done it's been obvious because I said, hey, we're gonna be getting together and recording this and you're gonna get the recording. <laughs> but I suppose potentially someday somebody could say like, I didn't know you were recording and I thought, well, and, and, um, and I'm actually, am pretty um, sensitive. About, I, I do not share the recordings that I make for each little um, journaling class that I do outside of the group that was there because of the sensitivity of people not agreeing to that. So. What I mean to say is, if you are going to record something you think you might be sharing to social media or putting on your website, you know, and you think there's any possibility that someone might share something that they wouldn't have said more publicly, be sure to get consent, which you can either just have implied consent by being really clear at the beginning, this is going to be recorded and it might be shared. And if you have an issue, please don't share. You can do that. Or you can do like a consent form and sh and send it out and have people sign it, just depending on what you're doing. But it's good to consider in our age of super, I don't know, nothing's private, but we want it to be, I guess. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, so we're going to talk about tools for having the conversation with people so you're in you've made your meeting you're recording it, um now you're talking to people and so i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself in fact i'm just going to skip ahead to do we need a moderator so today we've got a moderator and it is fantastic and actually i really really like it i'm going to advocate for getting a moderator whenever you can because I don't have to be checking the chat chat box or making sure that people aren't having problems with their audio or um, the other questions that could just be answered as a quick aside because Sarah's taking care of that. Um, but there's been plenty of times that I have not had a moderator and I'm talking about one thing or kind of have my head over here and just the reality of working in a tech setting where this technology, I'm not just in a classroom with humans, I'm talking to humans through cameras and cords and things that get crazy. And um, almost invariably somebody has just a question about like, hey, I can't get on here or whatever. Um, so having, having a person just handle that, if it's at all possible, is really helpful. But these are kind of my guidelines, if it's useful for you, like, this group, we do have about 10 people in the group right now with some couple people on the camera. And this is about, if I didn't have Sarah, I'd be right on the cutting edge or right on the edge of being comfortable all to answer questions while I'm doing this thing. Um, it, but it would be, I'm glad we have Sarah. Um, when I teach my soul journal circles or lead them, I never have a moderator because it's just like a, it's a lot of conversation and I don't feel like it's going to be an interruption to just to answer a question of various sorts. So 
It's one of these things. It just depends on what you're delivering and to whom. But you know, usually um, you can find a nice person who's willing to help out, um, and maybe you exchange them. Like they get a free admission to your class, or you know, you take them out for you know a beer when the world opens up, or whatever. Um, often I've found people are willing to be helpful and it can be something that can really make or break the success of your class instead of you having to spend the whole time solving problems. So that's the moderator. Whoops. Um, but I got a little ahead of myself because the conversation. So if you have a moderator handling a conversation, that's awesome. Um, but a lot of times you won't, especially in just small groups and stuff like that. So I wanted you just all to have an opportunity to kind of take a look at these different tools. They're pretty similar to what you're used to for using. I'm gonna open this up for you. Oh, wait, I'm gonna open it all the way up. Da, 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 da. Oh, I can't get it. I can't get it without. So um, I was gonna show you my screen while I was doing it, but I'm gonna just invite you guys. I'm again looking at a desktop, not a phone. These are slightly different on the mobile or you know on tablets or phones. But I suggest that when you get started with, with your group online, make sure everybody knows how to mute and unmute themselves, which is that you hover over the screen and the toolbar pops up on the bottom usually, although I've seen on someone else's computer it hovered on the top. I think my husband's iPad it hovered on the top. Whoops. Um, so make sure people know how to turn it on and off their mic. That's super important. Make sure, as Sarah do, does, that you tell them that you're going to turn off their mics also super important um unless i'm like the artists gathering that we were in yesterday everyone just left their mics on and just kind of chit chat and that's fine but if you're trying to people are trying to hear you and someone else is doing dishes and someone else is like you know fooling around getting someone out of a cabinet or whatever it's like it's terrible so just mute everybody and show them how they can unmute themselves and that seems to be the best same thing with the cameras um sarah was asking and i actually don't know this answer so i'm going to look up the answer i don't think you can just turn off everyone's camera i haven't found a way unless anyone here does know differently um but they so it's up to your viewer whether they want their camera on or off but again just make sure they know how um because i've been on calls and you guys probably have by now too where people are like trying to <laughs> poking in there and they're where is the, the and it's just like oh it's on the bottom <laughs> so you'll just your life will be easier if they know how to turn on off their sound and their camera um and the chat box is really really helpful so i like to always just point people towards the chat box not that i did it for you guys now that i think about it um but that same toolbar on the bottom this is for the participants they hit chat box and a little box it's just an instant message system which we're most mostly pretty used to looking at and they can either there's a drop down box for the message they can send it to everyone or they can pick another participant so people can chat back and forth betwixt each other without interrupting the group or they can send a message to everyone or they can send a message to like the host like for example yesterday i was or two days ago i was doing a class and someone wanted to just tell me something like as a quick aside so she just sent me a chat and I just see it out of the corner of my eye and I can just like, ba-boom, great, or send a little thumbs up icon or whatever. So it's a nice, it doesn't interrupt people. It's a nice way for people to be able to communicate. And, and I can actually turn off people's video as I just did to Sam, because she's not gonna care. It, um, and she was, and then you had to ask to turn it back on. So as the host, you can go through individually, it looks like, and turn off uh, videos, just so you know. Okay, so if someone's some, doing something obnoxious, you can turn off their video. But you, okay, that's good Clearly to know. Why I chose Sam? So not that, the, it's not this group. Back. This group, yeah, no obnoxious. So where is the chat box? So you hover over. So if you hover over your screen, you see the toolbar that has the microphone. So from left to right, it's got the microphone, the camera. I'm actually remembering, and um, a few other items. And then on that same toolbar, it says chat. Do you see that? No. I'm okay. on an iPad. Oh, so it's at the top. Do you at see your top, toolbar? There's, it, maybe it's more. No, it's not there. Chat, six, there, okay. It's underneath the three dots. Oh, okay, it's under more, okay. okay. And that's the, see, that's the tricky oh. thing is, do you find it? Okay, there it is. Okay, yeah. 
every device seems to be a tiny bit different. So it's a little bit of, even if you're used to using Zoom and you go on a different kind of a device, play around with it um, because it's just all, it's just the way it, the browsers are, I guess. Um, okay, so any other questions about chat, et cetera? Um, I did just wanna bring your attention to the hand raising function. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at all those chats. Okay, um, and the hand raising again is nice, especially here's if you have a bigger group and you don't have a moderator or you have a moderator that's looking for hand raising. Um, people can either go to their um, participants and there's a uh, hand or they can press alt option y and that either and that you can either raise or lower your hand that way alt y option y either raises or lower your hands and that's just again a way to get attention without so like hey i got a question over here and you know just like we would in an office type meeting um okay so we've got the moderator um I just wanted to give you guys an opera. Oops. Let me just go back here. I wanted to give you guys just a minute more. I'm going to close my screen share here for a minute. Um, aye, aye, aye. Okay. It just sent me a new thing I've never seen before. Um, invite. I've never used invite after a meeting has started, so I can't answer that. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna ask you guys, wherever your toolbar is, just look through it. This toolbar is how you're going to manage people's conversation with you. So if there's any other questions that we can answer right now, just so you're comfortable with it. Because it's one of these things, once you get comfortable with it, then you just go boop, 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 and you don't have to stop and think about it like I am right now, for example. Reactions, I mean, who doesn't love an emoji? See, there I just put a little thumbs up on my little face. Okay, so if, and you know, I'm just gonna click, oh yes, right, the invite, invite is again like, why would you be in the middle? I guess if you're talking to some people and you're like, oh, we should ask this person, but why would you send someone an email invite in the middle of a call? I haven't figured that one out yet. Okay, so if there are any other um, questions about any of that, as we go, look at Sam with his earth behind him. Okay, so we talked about that. Um, here's, this is strongly in the category of things Robin has learned the hard way. Again, because we're not just getting together in a classroom and we are getting together with, everybody's got a different setup and a different system and a different camera and they've got an iPad or they've got an old computer or they've got a new computer and they don't know how to use it. I really like to do a couple of things just to smooth out the possibility of people having tech issues. When I go to sit down to do any kind of online class, it's the tech issues that worry me. I'm just sitting there yakking, that doesn't worry me, as you can see, but people going like, I don't know how to, my I was, seriously, I, I was on a, a meeting yesterday and somebody was up and down. Their whole camera was upside down. They were like hanging from the ceiling. And she was like, I don't know why I'm upside down. Luckily, I was not hosting this meeting. And the other person was like, I don't, I don't know why you're upside down. So that sort of thing happens. So these are just my little tips to minimize the possibility of something totally weird happening during your event. The, the key is ask people to check their stuff beforehand. And you know, no one wants to do that because they're lazy or you know they think it'll be fine or whatever but i really implore and beg like really just log on make sure it works you know because i can answer you the day before or two days before but and i'll tell people i usually send out an email if these are people i haven't worked with um hey check it today because tomorrow i won't be able to answer your question <laughs> and a lot of times people are like oh i don't know how to do this or i couldn't make that work and then we can walk through it before the class so that's useful and like um i will usually direct people to me to answer a question I mean, i'm not a super genius but i know en enough to usually solve the basic stuff um but like if you were doing something bigger and you had a moderator or like a virtual assistant or something you might want to direct them to them um but the point is the, the important part is to ask people to check it and if they have a problem tell them where to go to solve the problem before your class starts 
And then once the class starts again, talking about the chat box, it's really useful. And especially if you've got someone monitoring your chat box, really useful. And the raising of the hand, very helpful. Just because stuff happens, I mean, and it doesn't matter if you think you're, you know, super comfortable with all kinds of tech or if you are terrified of it, just stuff glitches and it's weird. And we got a lot of components into each other and Wi-Fi does things and data does things. and if I've learned anything about using technology is that you just got to roll with it. So I try to get, leave a lot of wiggle room and a lot of um, just room for people to work through stuff. So they don't have to be distracted and they can, and they don't have to be nervous and they can just enjoy your class that you're delivering. And we already played with conversation tools, which again are very you know, the same as what you use to talk on Zoom. But the important part when you're delivering is you make sure that the people in your uh, in your classroom, understand how to use them. Um, I wanted to just hit on these three. We, there, I, I've, I guess I've personally had to do some research on these three things, and I've been learning kind of the hard way on these three things: spotlight, pinning, and split screen. These are a little more advanced, and you probably don't need them. I just wanted to touch on them. It's one of these things where. Another of the reasons why I really like Zoom is that their, their help articles are really good. And if you're going along and you're like, oh God, Robin kind of mentioned something about Spotlight, but I don't remember, Google it, how to Spotlight on Zoom. And it will take you right to a Zoom article and it will go, you do this, bah, 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 bah. It's really, that's really one of the reasons that I appreciate Zoom is they make it easy for you to learn. There's like these little one minute videos and all that stuff. The Spotlight, these are all different ways to see what's happening when you're working with your, with your audience of whatever size. The spotlight only, as far as I can tell, only works in a Zoom room, which is like a whole other offset. It's like conference breakout room. So if you've got a hundred people and then they split into 10 little groups, those are Zoom rooms. And we're not talking about that. That's like, that's, that's next level, um, I think for the, that's, we're not gonna talk about that today. But the spotlight is useful in that environment and that's why it came up because you can really kind of, and actually, oh, I, I'm gonna take that back because, um, I'm, hold on, I'm gonna scratch that. I had that in my head until just before this started. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, let's, ro let's roll that tape back. That's what I was gonna say and I just realized that actually Sarah figured it out. It's not just in Zoom rooms, it is, you can do it because I'm spotlighted. So what spotlighted means is that you guys are only seeing my face. And so Sarah, would you kindly review how you got me spotlighted? Because obviously I don't have that down in my head. Where yeah, did you find it? Yeah, I believe it's just for the host. Um, though Rob and I are learning about that today too. <laughs> so as you're managing the participants, which is something that's easy to see if you're hosting anything kind of up on the right, um, there's a more button that says make spotlight. And so that's it. That way, if we all had our microphones on and felt like chatting, which would be okay, or like when um, Sam had a question and Jan had a question, it still stayed on Robin. That's the point. So spotlight, you can unspotlight. It's easy. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So the alternative to that is if you're on speaker view, which is um, when you're looking at your screen up in the upper right hand corner it shows either gallery view or speaker view gallery view is all the little squares and speaker view is whoever is talking gets the screen unless spotlight is turned on so please forgive me for that incorrect information there that i hadn't caught up in my brain so we are spotlighted because i'm doing the majority of the yakking here um, but if we were all conversing then we put it on speaker view which is it defaults to and then whoever's talking gets the screen. Um, so that's spotlight is really useful. Pin is you can click on any one person. So like let's let's say I'm hovering over Sam right now, and I want to see only him, and only I want to see him. Then I can pin it. So um, and I'm sorry because I'm not looking at the right screen. But if you hover over a person's face, it's one of the drop down boxes and it says pin and it's a little thumbtack. And so if I just wanted to look at just one person as we're going through, I can pin it. But nobody else will see that. That's for me. Um, and the split screen 
is I'm just going to mention I looked it up and I was like I can't even fathom how you would use it in basically delivering an art class it really seems to be designed for more again more of the business environment where people are working on a report together or what have you um, it's set it's the idea is that one person you can see their face while you see somebody else's um, screen share but it's just a little more complex so if it's something that you think is important just google how did zoom how do you split screen and zoom but i'm not going to walk you all the way through it because i've never had to use it because i've never seen the point so i just wanted to bring up that it exists um, but it's one of these things too that you just when you go through and press all your buttons it gives you you can say oh i can make a split screen but you have to start by inviting another person to also share their screen and it's the whole thing so it's not something i use so before we go into talking about all the cool toys that you might want to buy for this not too many i promise you um, does anyone have any questions or comments or feedback or ideas just about actually using the software to talk to your people as you're delivering your content. I have a question. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, do you usually use Spotlight View for yourself or do you like the gallery view? I've preferred the gallery, um, but people don't know how to switch back and forth very often. This is the first time that I've ever used Spotlight View. Um, so, when i'm teaching my art journal class i use i do switch back and forth and i'm recording because i'm the host the my view is what's recording um the speaker view is nice when i like when people want to show what the work that they're doing and they make a little art journal page and, and then i say hey guys let's you know let's look at it see how we're in gallery view here and then if i go well you don't because i'm i'm spotlighted <laughs> I'm looking at you and a whole bunch of little boxes. So when I'm on speaker view, I'm holding up, you know, look at this thing I made and everybody can see it on their whole screen. Whereas if we're looking at gallery view and you want to, then you just see everybody's face and you can't see a detail. So speaker view is nice if people want to show stuff on their camera. Um, but gallery view is nice when you want to look at the whole group. And so I, I do switch back and forth. It kind of depends on what I want to be doing. And it's just not very hard because you just go up to the upper corner and just click, click. There's probably a keystroke too. I've just never bothered to learn it. I'm sure this is a keystroke. There's a lot of keystrokes. Does that does that answer your question? Yeah. Have you, um, as the host, are you able to manipulate other people's gallery versus speaker view at all? No. I have not figured that out. Okay. Except for Spotlight. So the, and that's again just learned this today. So you guys are really only seeing me, right? Even while I'm answering this question, you guys aren't seeing Jan, right? You're only seeing me? Well, um, so for me, you know, because you're in screen share, I think is what changes that, right? So you're in screen share, oh. so we're all yeah, seeing okay. the screen, and then you have, um, you know, There we go. Kind of, yeah, there you go. Kind of like everyone at the top. Um, right. You're still right. highlighted. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different, but before, you know when jan was unmuted it still was highlighted around just you so that's where you get as a host some control over how you want that to happen right and i don't and each participant and this is another thing that you may want to just guide people to understand they can choose as they're as they're watching your presentation your class whatever you're giving they can go back and forth so i'm in gallery view right now sorry i was in speaker view I'm in gallery view right now. So this is nice because I can see uh, everybody's nice, lovely face. But if I want to just look at whoever's talking and just see a little tidbit up top. And so, you know, it's like any conversation, you're going to switch back and forth from looking at one person to kind of backing up and looking around at the room. And so each participant can do that. They, um, unless you've got somebody spotlighted so that they can't be all fooling around. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think that's the information I have. Does that help? Is that helpful? Okay, super. All right, I'm going to go back to my screen and we're going to talk about the stuff. Um, I'm going to just start by saying I am in no way a gearhead at all. I'm actually afraid of things that plug in. I never think they're going to work. I am so terrified that they're not going to work and I'm not going to know how to fix it or they're only going to know how to, they're only going to work for a minute and then I'm going to have to figure out how to like make it work again. I'm just not a, um, 
very comfortable with gear. So that is my caveat because some people love gear and they would say, oh my God, you're not working, using the right stuff, blah, 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 blah. Everything I'm gonna tell you is like the basics to make it work. Could you go and get super advanced, amazing, awesome stuff? Absolutely. But I have the basics to make it work and I'm gonna encourage if you're just getting started, why not start with the basics to make it work? So, uh, da, da, da. whoops, I missed one. Okay, lighting is really, I mean, and you guys, you're artists, you know how this is. It's, it's basically no different than if you're taking photographs of your work, you know, you have to have good lighting. And in fact, I um, need a second light. I have one light right now, I actually got this I don't recommend, here's a don't recommend. I spent too much money through Instagram because Instagram totally has me figured out, Robin, you need a social light. And if you have a social light, then you will look amazing and in every camera and you will be, you'll have 10,000 followers by tomorrow if you buy the social light. So off I went, bought this social light. I'm actually gonna show you, I'm gonna move my little camera. So here's my light and it's pretty cool. This is my light. And so the thing is that it's a light ring and it's dimmable and adjustable and it's on a tripod. So that's all pretty cool, but it's also the flimsiest thing ever. And um, I have to hope every time I plug it in that it's actually going to work. So next time I buy a light, I will get a good light like they have at Gallery One, just a regular photography light with like the screen on it. Don't spend too much money on a social light. It will not change your life But do spend money on a good quality light. So what I like is... See, I can change my lighting and, well, now it's too bright. So you've got to have a good strong light, just like any, any recording or taking photographs. Um, it's, it is well worth the investment and you may already have it. The first, when I first started making little video content, I was just using a whole bunch of actual lights around the house and, you know, just do what you got to do until you can get with the next thing. Um, and you can always borrow stuff too. Like as we're talking about gear, we it's definitely here in Ellensburg have a really cool community of people. We don't all have to have a light. So, you know, maybe you can borrow one and we don't all have to have all the webcams. Maybe you can borrow one and what have you. So, but in order to shoot a good Zoom thing, you've got to have some good light. I was just in a meeting a couple of days ago and there was somebody, man, she just really wanted to be part of it, but she had no light. Nobody could see her. <laughs> Oh, she, it was my, it was a, um, one of the journal classes, really nice person, but nobody could see what was, she was trying to show us because she just didn't have enough light. So that's an easy problem to solve. Um, the computer, I thought about getting into like what you need for certain kinds of like, um, operating systems and stuff. If it's an issue, if you have an older computer, just look it up. But for the most part, any newer computer can run Zoom. You know, sometimes people have older stuff and if you're still running on a computer that's old and you've kept it going, then you probably can figure it out. Um, here's where I just say my personal, my personal take, I prefer to run events through my desktop or sorry, my laptop rather than through my phone. That's personal. Um, but the absolute must is you've got to have reliable internet. So it's like... This is another question or another issue I learned the hard way. I was, um, when I was first doing this, I did not have good internet and I'd be going along and it'd be getting all crackly and <laughs> kind of thing like that. And it's like so irritating. So there's a lot of ways to get yourself next to some good internet, whether or not you have it at home, but I strongly encourage don't even try without high, what do you call it? high speed streaming Wi-Fi or internet. It doesn't have to be Wi-Fi, but internet. Because otherwise you're just going to be sad. Okay, and the studio. Here's my dream studio. Not really, but there's a, there's a fantasy studio. How about that? Um, my studio as we speak is my bedroom with a backdrop behind me and a light in front of me. So you don't need fancy anything. What you do need, it's got to be quiet. Um, as we speak, I've got two dogs that keep desperately saying, I don't understand why I can't be in the room with you because you're in there and I'm in, out here and they keep going at the door and I hope <laughs> you guys are hearing them, but they're not allowed to be in here because if something happens outside, then they will bark. So quiet space, um, two cameras. We're going to talk about the cameras again in just a, uh, in a moment. 
um, the workspace, if you're showing, if you're demonstrating, make sure whatever you're working on doesn't shake around your whole camera and your computer and all that stuff. You know, make sure you've got it on a good steady table. Again, that goes under categories of things Robin has learned the hard way. Don't put all your stuff on a shoddy, shaky table and then try to work and have everything okay. No, nice and steady. And the backdrop, I believe I picked up this sweet little number for like 20 bucks on probably Amazon. And now, and but it's been great. It just folds up. I mean, it's great. I hang it up with thumbtacks onto the ceiling. I mean, I could get fancier, but I haven't needed to. And okay, I might get the green screen because I kind of like the background, the zoom background thing, but I might not because I like to try to keep it simple. I probably will eventually just because I think it's cool. Um, but I want to go back to the cameras. Hold on. I'm just going to, yeah. Oh, I'm going to go forward to the cameras is what I'm going to do. This was the bottleneck for me. So for like two years, I was like, there's got to be a way for me to do this stuff online. Other people do this stuff online, but how the heck are they doing it? I don't understand. And finally, I have a friend that I asked the right question to the right person. And she was like, oh, you do two cameras. <laughs> Because I was like, do I put it on my face? And then I take the camera and put it on my thing that I'm trying to do. And then I put it back on my face. She was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't think that would work. She's like, that would not work. No, no. You have two cameras. So I'm going to jump out of the sharing just for a minute so I can show you. Next to your video on your toolbar, where there's this, you have the stop video and then there's the little up arrow. If you have more than one camera plugged in, then that is where you move back and forth between the two cameras. So I'll just show you. For instance, right now I am on a, um, a webcam that is much better than my integrated webcam in my computer, as you'll see. Oh, there I am. So I can just switch back and forth slowly. So if I was over here showing you something, look, I'm making this thing over here, da, 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 and I've got it all set up. And then I want to come back and go over here. Oh, what did you think about that thing? That's a little clunky because actually I had intended to set up my whole other camera and I completely forgot. Um, but that is the way you just switch back and forth between two cameras. So what I have, let me go back to my screen share. Do, 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 do. Here we are. Um, I have my webcam that's looking at my face, and then I have an adjustable arm, and they cost like $30 or something like that, that just goes over my workspace with another camera hanging right down. So it's looking down at my work. So I go back and forth between my face and my work, and my face and my work. And you can set them all up ahead of time, and then it's just really smooth, and you don't have to be rearranging stuff. And there's a keystroke, so you can do Alt N. So I'm going to Alt-N. Oh, here's my other camera. Alt-N. And here's my face again. So you can either get to it by the toolbar, which is next to the camera icon, or with a, with a keystroke, which in this case is Alt-N. And if you forget that, you just Google it. Like, how do I switch between two cameras in Zoom? It is a game changer. That is where I was totally, totally stuck. Because I was like, I don't understand how I'm supposed to be talking to people and seeing people and being on the computer and also making stuff. And the two cameras is the answer. So the good news is my two cameras um, are both like, again, maybe $30 webcams. Um, I am told, Justin Beckman just said yesterday he tried to get some and there are none to be had right now. Um, which is not super surprising because everybody's on Zoom. But again, they exist there in the world. I just have two Logitech cameras and they're fine. Are they amazing? Am I going to go out and shoot an Oscar winning uh, movie with them? No. But are they fine? Absolutely. And they didn't cost a fortune and I have more than made back my investment and in, enjoy alone. So two cameras is your answer. And Robin, I'm going to jump in super briefly and say um, just because in every all of us being in the same situation. Um, I have a feeling come next year when everyone, you know, pushes out their new versions of laptops and whatever, as they do every year, um, the cameras and those are going to be dramatically different because I was just looking at some reviews on laptops. And before this has even happened, people were talking about how 
they've, you know, all these companies have poured all this money into these amazing cameras on your phones and they have not touched the webcam in years and years and years and years. <laughs> and so surely anyone who's smart right now is in those rooms saying, oh, we should come up with another reason to make you buy the newest version next year. <laughs> so, I am sure that will be much, much improved webcam. So that'll be interesting to see how that develops. Absolutely. Yes, I totally agree. And like in, on my laptop, my webcam is down in the lower left corner. So I have to be like down. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's the stupidest thing. So it's, you know, if you have, you, you might have a, a use for an external webcam anyway, but don't, as Sarah's saying, yeah, first of all, tech always gets better. And that's, you don't need to sink a whole bunch of money into any kind of um, equipment as a starter if you get into it and you love it like some people just love that stuff and they want to like read the magazines and buy all the best da, da, da. if that's who you are then great um but it's not necessary what is necessary two cameras okay and an arm to hold one of the cameras up or i have a friend who just rigged up a um a piece of plywood with a um like a she clamped a camera to a piece of well it wasn't plywood i'm sorry it was a little two by four that she just rigged up between two spots and just hung her camera from it so you can be clever your artist okay okay there we go i want to make sure i didn't miss it okay um i just wanted to show you my picture so this is my very humble studio and this is what it looks like when i teach a class and um it was just uh, whatever I did the best I could here's my little webcam webcam number one here so that I have two things against each other and so they're a little hard to see but here's my extendable arm it's clamped to the table and it's got a camera hanging off of it it looks over at my workspace here so I'm working away on my little daily do and people are seeing my camera and then when I want them to see my face I just switch cameras to the face and here's my light and I actually need to invest in a second light. Right now I only have one light and I keep thinking, you know, Robin, you could use two lights. But, um, you know, point being, you can get by with what you got until you got the next thing. So that is my, that's my recording studio. And it's pretty simple to replicate. And I have done pretty well with the online thing. So you can too. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about the backdrops uh you know we talked a little bit about the virtual background i think it's so cool gonna have to get a green screen it seems like well so sam got hers working and i suspect it has to do with that she's got a different computer or something like that apparently for some people it works and some it doesn't i've seen it on i've been on zoom meetings and people have these awesome backgrounds and i'm like i want an awesome background but i guess i have gear that's going to need a screen um, the short story is it's worth a try if you want to just give it a try and see if it works on your computer or whatever you're looking at your phone or your tablet then next to the camera it's just in that in that uh, bullet menu there next to the camera virtual background is one of your options and you can always just try it you can just click 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 and see if it works and if it doesn't work you might need a green screen or you might have to just say oh well um this backdrop that i have behind me again i bought it inexpensively i think from amazon um and i have had no issues with it um i will say i, I was tempted to say well you could always hang up a sheet but i don't recommend that um i actually did try that and they are always super wrinkly and they always get stuff stuck on them and it looks like you are standing there with a sheet behind you it's just not the same so this backdrop fabric is a heavier thicker i mean it has a little bit of wrinkling in it but it, it's a heavy um polyester so it hangs really well and i mean again you can do whatever you need to do and then sam was saying if some of you guys missed it that to get a good green screen he just went down and this would work for any backdrop really if you've got a small area behind your head he just went and got a big piece of paper from gerald's oh he might be even showing us he got a green piece of paper from Gerald's and I'm um, probably like a 22 by 30 and he had a green screen and you can do that. So, you know, there's lots of um, simple solutions. And if Sam comes back with a paper, then we'll, we'll see what he has got. Oh, hold on. Let's go back. See, he's got a green screen. Look at that.
Hold on. Carol's neon, neon green. This worked just uh, perfectly. That, I, that looks like the right color. For animations, you can cut it into shapes and fit blue screen stuff into, into other shapes. But this is just Gerald's just construction paper. Oh my God. Super, All right, super, you guys. Really good. You got to go make cool things with your Gerald's green string animations. I want to say it. Okay. I'm going to mute that. Okay. Um, so, oh, there's a cute kid. Oh, are you guys playing around? You're playing around with your backgrounds. All right, so that is what I had to share with you, but I definitely want to, I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to um, just stop my, stop my screen. Um, so does anyone have any comments, questions, ideas, thoughts? Oh, look at Renee and Justin, they've got giraffes behind them. Oh my God, so you guys are so cool. I really need to work on this. See, I'm going to need a new laptop with a better webcam and then I can do backgrounds on. That's all. I just need to go shopping. I don't think I can do that. Yeah, see, I think it has to do with your... But do you see where to try? Next to the video, choose virtual background. And see, for me, <laughs> all crazy. So crazy. Oh, it's, and it's because it's not green behind me, so it's like picking up. Yeah, it picks, it'll, it'll, it has trouble with hair because yeah. like, if you put a ring light, a backlight in with your gray background, it might um, bust out your hair. Because if uh, you put a light, then it could, it could decide that the back was back there and you're, you're in front of it. Uh -huh. So you might be able to fix that with just some lighting, just to add another light, like a little LED from Woods, one of those high uh, color rendition index, C-R-I, uh, and like a look at the color temperature of your light, like if it's 3200K or 5000K, get that same kind of light from just Woods, these new LED ones, get the, the high color rendition index ones and they work fine and they're like six bucks. And you put it in front of your backdrop or behind your backdrop? Uh, behind me. Like you might just light yourself up more on your head, like what's called a uh, ring light. Like this to separate wait, your head from wait, that back. Okay, and I'm the computer this... will maybe be able to handle it better. Hold on, we're gonna experiment, because we can. No, 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 no. <laughs> I unmuted you guys, just so you know, so you can chat. Okay. Just try it. Hold on, Did it work? I'm just cranking up the light. Well, but that's right in front. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you need to separate point. your head. It's it's having right. trouble with the, you the need value me to of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. That sounds like playtime for another moment. Yeah, that's playtime. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I gotta turn this down a little bit more. Yes, okay. my computer, Sam Fisher, what well you both both your computers are working, both the Sams. Uh-huh. Yeah. They must have newer versions. Are you on Mac? Which is cool. Uh, I'm on an HP, oh. but it's, it's pretty new. It's I, iPad. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And Peg, I don't know what Peg's going on. See, my, oh. hair's, my hair's freaking out sometimes. <laughs> you can, uh, you can uh, use your photos from uh, your photo gallery. So this is a uh, blue-footed, goofy bird. So. Oh, look, it's almost all of us, just Amy and me and Robin. <laughs> yeah. We can't. Everyone else. On my from my tablet, I don't see any settings to do it. Oh, sure. Oh, on tablet. Oh, nice. Look at the green screen action there, Sam. It does. You know what? It works. Reflecting the green on there. Okay. Okay. I'll see if I can find that. How to do virtual background on tablet? All right. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, Abby. Every device has its own little thing. So do you all feel like you have enough to get started and just try to try to play and make a little make a little something something to share with the world? Yeah. Yeah. Share? Yeah. Well, here's your challenge. Make a thing. Make a thing. Make a one hour thing. Make a free one hour thing. Invite a friend. Because now's the time, you guys. Or, or five, well, minutes. five minutes. It doesn't have to be an hour. Yeah, five minute thing. Make a five minute thing. Try five, five hours. See how that goes. <laughs> Damn, your thing has to be on weeding. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, but so, yeah, no, but so 
Okay, I have a, I have a couple of questions about if we're doing a class, do and do you want and and normally if you were doing a real class, you'd be seeing what the people were working on, right? And you'd be able to feed back with them and and like right. grab their hand and you know, well you can't do that. And it's different than an instructional tape. I mean, I've made instructional tapes over the years and we script them, edit them, you know, I mean, it's all, you know, it's mm -hmm. months of work really to do it really well, but it's different doing this live thing. It's a hybrid. So how do you interact with the students? But then do you, do you like show them a thing and then have them do it? Or do you, yep. are you demoing it? And then, you know what I mean? The, I don't know. I show a thing and I have them do it and I give them some time to do it. And then they start showing me and I ask them like, are they ready to show their work yet? And then I make sure that I'm on speaker view, which I will switch to. And I ask them to hold their thing up to the camera so I can really see it. And then I give them feedback. So I'm not moving their hand, but I can be like, okay, this is what I see or, you know, have you tried that? Or, you know, I wonder how this would look or blah, blah, blah. You know, that sort of that kind of feedback, um, which is, um, I, this wouldn't work very well for like teaching wood carving, I don't think. Right. You know, things right. where you really have to like angle, or maybe it would, but it'd be a little trickier. But when someone's creating something and then you're just giving them feedback on, on you know, like, so when Sam teaches this, I think it's going to go really well, this, the virtual sip and paint. Be, yes, it will. <laughs> because she's going to be able to look people will be able to turn their canvases to the to the camera and she'll be, be able to give them feedback on what they're making and same thing amy when you're teaching the the kids how does it go for you i had done it on facebook live and not on zoom um and so that was hard because i could not see what they were doing on zoom um I, no i had done it on facebook not on oh zoom. yeah 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 so, yeah yeah, yeah, getting familiar with Zoom would make that a lot easier. Oh yeah, no, this would be awful if you couldn't see what they were doing. Because how would you know what was happening over there? Yeah, exactly. So I just yeah. wanted to show you this thing that Jeff doctored up for me. Oh, so the tripod, and then we took the thing that sticks on your windshield. Perfect. On, and then oh. my phone just kind of magnets on there. There you go. So right. I can just Second kind of camera. move around. So There's I'm gonna see how that works. It worked for doing those um like fast what they call fast motion painting things like you can just set it up and leave it running but we'll see how that goes sam, um, sam in your class on friday are you going to use like we talked about in the chat like the two different sign-ins cameras or are you going to yeah do i'm just going to sign in on this one and my phone and then i think this one i'll just use for like i'll have the canvas behind me here so working and then the phone one I'll use to kind of move around to go, oh, look at this, or that's what I'm thinking. I don't know exactly, but I'm sure it'll probably evolve. <laughs> probably try it and then go no or whatever. This so. is a learn by doing. This is absolutely a learn by doing. And give yourself some grace. I'm gonna say this. Yeah, so luckily over. most of the people who signed up are like, I know them, so that's good. So it's not like I have some random people that are like, I expect this perfect you know, <laughs> class. <laughs> so it'll be interesting can i ra oh is this raising the hand wait i'm supposed to do something here wait do um, alt y let's see what happens when you hit alt y okay. well i'm on an ipad so it's like oh, i don't I have a green oh i shit. didn't do anything oh okay. no. to, so where was that it was like participant oh no. i see amy's I oh see raise them. hand oh, there it is i, I hit raise hand interesting. yeah 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 okay so is there a way to use how do i use my phone and the iPad. That would be my two cameras, and they're killer cameras. Just how sign in on both. Yeah. Sign in on both and mute mute the volume on one. Like if I sign in you on you can sign in. You can sign in on with both of them. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, I thought we had to like plug them in somehow. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so we're, we're beyond plug in. That, Sam, you did that on something the other day that I. Uh, sorry, other Sam. Sam Fisher did that, and she had the computer and the phone going and yes. i did that because my audio was being weird on my computer i did that just recently too and i just did audio on my phone and did my screen on my computer and the the only thing is you will be two different faces on the gallery view so you have to just kind of know which one you're looking at oh 
That's the okay, only so thing. if I hit join meeting, yeah, join oh, the meeting. Let's that. see what it says. Yeah, join the meeting. Do well, have, I don't have the, yeah, I don't I'll have do the it. code. I'm trying to do it right now. What's the Zoom ID, Sarah? Do you have that in front of you? Sam's on it. Sam Fisher. She's she's all over she's that. Way. I don't need to teach her things. <laughs> she's good. <laughs> there she goes. See? Hi, Sam and Sam. Move one of your cameras. There she is. Oh, where is the other one? Here, I'm going to take you out of spotlight view, Robin, then they can okay. see. Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Now, Sam, you can, everyone else can, Sam, you can talk on both of them and see what we get. Try that again. Wait. Well, what happens? If okay. Done? Yeah. There's that one. We're seeing that one. And I'll try your other one. What do you mean, try my other one? Oh, never mind. Yeah. You're that fast. What? I mean, see. Oh. I was trying to get you on speaker view on both of them so Sam could oh. see the other one. I think I have my audio off on my oh, phone. So yeah. that it's, because if I put both the audios on, it does a really crazy, like, echo yeah. thing. Don't do that. You get this okay. weird echoey feedback thing. Yeah. But yeah, that's oh. a really simple way to have two cameras. Um, yeah, Sam, Sam um, Albright. So if you go to gallery view, now that I um, took off spotlight, you'll see both Sam Fishers. You'll see her phone and you'll gallery. see her. Yes, so I'm on the right hand corner. Oh, geez, except for you're on the tablet. Yeah. You'll find gallery view. Oh, you well, I'm on, I'm on gallery view. I mean, I can see all the people. Right, yeah. So you got Sam on there twice. Anyway. Isn't that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I guess I don't because. And then uh oh, I did something. There you go. Oh, that's right. no. oh well, go go on. Don't go. Okay. Don't go on. <laughs> anyway, that's doable. Yeah, log into two accounts on two cameras, and you'll have it. Yeah, on the phone, question? it's really hard to find the class. Now, the only other thing I would say is, when you go to make a presentation and you want to share it with people, you will have to tell them a whole bunch of times what the Zoom ID is, how to get on there. Um, Zoom does create, it automatically makes this big long invitation that has either the link to get on or the, the member or the, the um, meeting ID and all the different phone numbers. You can share that with people. Sometimes they need it. Sometimes they think it's overwhelming. Just play with it. But they will ask you 600 times how to get into Zoom. So just be prepared for that. Um, especially right now because we have all these different Zoom meetings going on and people will be like, what's the ID? What's the ID? So you'll have to tell people look this is how you're going to get in um and um and make sure that they again you know just ask them to do it ahead of time make sure that they know how um but then it's just like any other class and it's got a ton of versatility and opportunity and oh the other thing i was going to say is because you when you're recording which we are right now then you've got it so if you teach a class and you just want to share it and again you might want to get permission from your attendees but if you you know just want to do a free class because you want to share it and grow your list or just be a nice human being or whatever um then you've got this product and all it took really was just starting up a call and hitting record and then you can um clean up the video afterwards if you're comfortable with with, with video editing um because once we're finished and we have then we'll have the video recording and an audio recording so if that's something you know that is valuable to you and the chat box saves as well so if people ask questions or you want to go back and you know look at it again so it's pretty cool unlike yeah. a classroom class where it's gone forever a zoom class you've got it and you can you can use it again in the future or share it with people or and they don't have to be there they can come to your class after the class is over which you know is a nice thing and Sam Fisher had a good point. She w had a reminder that even if people, I, I haven't experienced this my, myself. I haven't either. I just heard it from a friend. Okay. Heard it from rumors. Guys. Sorry. That your chat will show, the admin can see all of the chats even if they're private so that's, that's right okay. if that is indeed true that is good to know yeah there we go yeah thank you <laughs> note to self 
if you're saying snarky things about the host, they might be able to see that later. <laughs> this host, I just don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know what she's doing. I don't like her earrings. Her hair is messed up. You know, whatever. Those bangs aren't straight enough. Oh, I don't right. know. <laughs> Gave herself a home haircut. That's right. <laughs> Okay, well, that is what I have to share. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments or thoughts or brilliant ideas? I would love, so first of all, okay, I would love if you decide to make something and you decide to share it with me, I'd be so happy. It's robin at robinmayberry.com, you will find me, or uh, a lot of you know me on Facebook as well, Robin O. Mayberry at Facebook, which I was like, Every time I'm like, I'm walking away from Facebook. I'm, I hate Facebook. Then something happens like COVID and then I'm all over Facebook again. So I'm done swearing off Facebook. Um, <laughs> and I also really, really, again, wanted to thank um, Gallery One and Confab and all of you fabulous people for coming because I'll tell you what, I learned so much having to share it that you have really made a big difference in my world. And so I hope that this will make a difference for you and you can go make stuff. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Thanks, Robin. Bye. Bye. Okay, have a wonderful day. Bye.